Hey everybody, my name is Brian and I am the software developer behind Magic 8-Ball. This is the user guide for version 137. This video, is, like all other videos before it, is really driven by community feedback. So if you're in the Discord, I'm trading with you every day. Love you guys. Um, it's amazing to me how the community has really helped this software grow. And if you have no idea what Magic is, I'm going to try to explain it to you in a simple sentence. It is a zero DTE options forecasting and trade engine. And what that means is it basically creates predictions on the stock market and then creates trades for day traders or zero DTE options traders, including uh, SPX, XSP, NDX, Apple, Tesla, and a few others. Um, this started years ago. I've been working on this for about three, almost four years now. Um, it was right in the height of COVID when I started developing it. And it generates not just a forecast, but a prediction along with example trades. And those trades have been wildly successful. We have a huge community of traders out in Discord, and there's even a free version. And this video is going to serve as the user guide because I get a lot of questions from people saying, I'm new, what do I do, how do I use this thing? So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, let's dive in. I've got notes because this is a complex topic and I wanna to cover everything as fast as I can so I don't waste your time. What is it? Well, it's a zero DTE options prediction engine with example trades, we covered that. Um, this has been running essentially since January, 2023. Um, that's the official start date. It's been running a lot longer, but that's its official start date is January, 2023. It's accuracy has really improved with each version. Um, I don't release a new version unless it has a substantial increase in accuracy and profitability for the end user. Cause I just, I don't want to waste people's time or money. Um, We'll see here, version 137, the current version, is considered long-term support. And what that means is this is the version that's going to exist for the foreseeable future. I am going to make a version two, which we'll talk about at the very end of this whole thing. But in short, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I've had a lot of people, especially in the Discord, saying, please, please, please don't change anything. So this is long-term support. The only thing that will be added to this from this point forward is simply bug fixes. That frees me up for version two, and it makes the software predictable for its current users. All right, so the system's designed to trade with no stop loss running to expiration, and that sounds insane, but I want you to understand that when we talk about profit, especially when we talk about the logs, we're talking about sending that order to the broker and forgetting it even exists. No stop loss, no management, no profit collection, just boom, we let it ride. Now in the real world, I would not recommend that. I would recommend stop loss, risk management, and profit collection. I do that myself, and I'm the developer of this software. But when we talk about numbers, especially accuracy and profit, we're talking about zero management. These are raw numbers. Just bear that in mind. All right, so uh, version 137 has also been back tested. So 137 is still fairly new. It was released officially on September 30th of 2024, just literally like a few weeks ago. And um, the problem with releasing a new version, especially when you do a major overhaul of the engine, is that people don't trust it. So I did a back test using the old data and we currently, as of the time of this recording, have 137 and the older version, 136, which is trusted, both running at the same time. And I'll show those later in the video. But right now, really what I'd like to talk about is some metrics here. And I'll put these up on the screen. So version 136 versus 137, I have them side by side. We're talking the 1030 SPX butterfly. You can see that the 136 has a, a much deeper drawdown and limited profitability, where the 137 has less drawdown and much higher profitability. That's because butterflies have been the bane of my existence in this software, and I did a complete overhaul of the butterfly code. Now the 1030 SPX vertical and 136 and 137, you'll see are almost identical. And that's because we wanted to approach this with the premise of if it's not broke, don't fix it. Meaning I didn't want to introduce more bugs by sitting there tweaking around with things that I know already work. Um, verticals in the system are considered the workhorse. That's what I personally trade almost every day. Next, we're gonna look at the 1335 butterfly. Now, in case you're wondering about the timing, just reduced 12 hours. So this is actually 1.35 Eastern Standard Time. All time frames are Eastern Standard. 
This assumes you took one trade a day at 135 on SPX and you would have made about $44,000 at the end of that time period. And that back test ran from January uh, 23rd, 2023, I'm sorry, 2024, January 3rd, 2024, all the way up until um, the end of October. So not even a full year, we're talking you know, 10 months basically. The next one, um, iron condors, uh, not nearly as dramatic. This is the 1255 iron condor. You can see there's some severe drawdowns here and profitability was limited. We're talking about $900 profit. Now that, again, this is entering the trade, letting it ride all day, and that's what you live with, live or die. Either max profit, max loss, that's what you took. This is really a good case study for why you need risk management. Iron condors in this system have like over a 95, and in some cases even 99% accuracy rating. But the loss on these, the risk on these is so great that when you lose, I mean one loss on an iron condor will wipe out weeks of profit. So that one loss will wreck your account. This is why you want to use risk management. If you followed proper risk management, that chart would be much, much more profitable. And then um, moving on, we have sonar. Now, sonar is an iron condor, but it is calculated completely differently and it has a better risk to reward ratio. So you can see the profit on the sonars, these iron condors, are much, much better. If you had taken one sonar a day at 350 Eastern Standard Time, you would have made $34,000. That's right, you're just literally logging in, copying the trade, pasting it into Thinkorswim, hitting send to your broker, and walking away and you would have made $34,000. Now, it gets even better. The 1035 vertical, this is my, my baby right here. I have a smaller account, so I tend to stick with these guys. Um, you would have made $4,500 if you did the 1035 vertical. Again, that's just once a day, copy the trade, send it to the broker, walk away, don't even manage it. Now, in the real world, you wouldn't do that. You'd follow risk management and your profit would probably be a little bit better. Now, this one right here is going to get people really excited really fast. This is the 1015 NDX butterfly, and yeah, $79,000 profit. $79,000 profit, but this is also NDX, and NDX will get mean and nasty very quickly because it moves so violently. Um, I've calculated it's about a fifteen dollars to $16,000 drawdown on this, so you would have to have a larger account to handle this thing, but for just clicking a mouse button once a day at you know 10, 15, and not even managing it. I mean, you're not even watching the screen. You're literally sending the order and going and playing golf or hitting the bar with your friends or whatever you do at 10, 15 in the morning. $79,000, I mean, that replaces most people's day jobs. You can't beat that. The final graphic I wanted to show here is that we've talked a lot about time. And time is really irrelevant. The system's designed so that it kicks out the trades every five minutes. Now, granted, some times of the day are more accurate and profitable than others, and we call those heat maps. And this is a heat map you're looking at right here. You'll see that like the butterflies, for example, there's a hot spot between 10.50, or I'm sorry, 10.20 and 10.30, and another one around lunchtime at 11.25, and then a good cluster around 1.30 to 1.45. Now, it doesn't mean you have to take those trades during those times. You can take a trade any time of the day. The system's designed to change with the market. So as the market changes, regardless of the time of the day, it will recalculate and generate new trades. Again, those trades are put out there every five minutes. Now, what that means is if you're running late and you just don't have time to snag like the 1015 NDX butterfly, fine, grab the 1030, grab the noon. It doesn't matter. Just grab the one that you feel comfortable with. Now. I'm going to repeat this throughout the video and I want to make it very clear. Don't trade every single trade magic throws out there. You're, it's a recipe for disaster and I don't know of a single person that could handle the capital needed, the buying power needed, or the drawdown. Um, I mean, imagine taking like a thousand iron condors a day and they all went against you. Your account would be gone. So don't do that. Take one trade, one time, make a methodology, find what works for you, and then interact with the community. Learn from your peers. There's a lot of people in this group that are way smarter than me. Now let's talk about the benefits of the paid version. And I've got some notes here. Um, 
the cost. No one wants to pay for anything. I get it. I mean, paying for things sucks, right? So I price this at a specific price point to make it extremely painless. It's $25 a month. You can come in your very first day, and I've seen this time and time again. You come in your first day, take one trade, and you have paid for an entire year of magic. It happens quite a bit. Um, 25 a month, especially for options trading software, is nothing. Um, that being said, where's that 25 a month go? Well, it feeds my back end. Servers, data feeds, things like that. I also have a love of pizza, so you'll see me every Friday and they're saying, hey, if you made money, donate to the pizza jar. Um, but the thing is, I have real world things I have to pay for in the back end. Nothing's free, especially cloud infrastructure. Um, the paid version also includes trades like the Butterfly, the Iron Condor, the Sonar, which we'll cover these things later on in detail, and verticals. It also comes with metrics, and these are every five minute snapshots you get instantly updated metrics. I mean, these are real time, nothing's hidden from you. And it's got multiple charts that are highly detailed that we'll cover. And these charts are, they're detailed, they're complex, but at the same time, once you learn them, you can just look at the chart and not even have to think about what's happening. You're like, oh, that's what I need to do. It's very simple. And you get a massive community. And a lot of people are going to gloss over this part. Mm, don't do that. This community is massive and it's full of industry experts. Um, we have a mentor system so that anybody can really come in and say, hey, I know a lot about the market and I'd like to help other people. And they can start their own channel. And many of these mentors run their own businesses, but they really help the community. So you'll get people in there that are you know, working in the stock market for 25, 30 years, or you'll get mathematicians and data scientists. It's just insane. This community is so powerful. And honestly, I'm in there every day answering and asking questions because well, guess what? I don't know everything. And there's people in here that know a lot about the market. So don't underestimate the community because there's been times where I just, I couldn't guess what I wanted to do. And I watched the community and they're like, well, we're all taking this trade. I'd take it. I'd make money. Okay, for those of you that are new to Discord, this server may be a little daunting. Now, why is it in Discord? Well, very simple. I wanted it to be easily accessible. You see we have the paid version of Magic and the free version of Magic, both available in Discord. Now, the problem is if you're new to Discord or if you're just new to the server, it can be pretty daunting. I mean, there's a lot of information here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down. We're going to go through and we are going to collapse all categories and just walk through these a little bit at a time. And you may see things light up as there's activity in the server. So the welcome section, pretty self-explanatory. You have help, which just has some general, you know, what can we do to help you? And then cancel, walks you through how to cancel. Welcome is really the landing page. This is where almost all new users land. Legal disclosure and questions, which are available to the public. We also have some general server rules. And let's jump into information. You notice how these are broken into category. It makes it super easy to find what you're looking for. Announcements, this is where typically I'll put things out there for the entire community. There is a tip jar, so if you made a small fortune, you can buy me a pizza. And the user guide. As a new user, this is typically where you're gonna get pointed to. You're gonna come in with a question and people are gonna say, hey, see the user guide. And it's because we put a lot of information in here and guess what? It is action packed, it's got videos. This very video will probably be right there at the very beginning and it walks you through the entire system. PDT hacks, if you don't know what PDT is, is the pattern day trading rule, which basically says if you have less than 25,000 in your account, you can only make so many trades per week. These hacks show you how to get around those rules. Very, very worth the watch. Instructions is kind of like a condensed version of everything we just talked about, and frequently asked questions is pretty self-explanatory. Magic Sonar, I get questions on this all the time. There is a live feed that I have. Now, this is not Magic. This is Magic Sonar. It's two different things. This is a script that runs inside the options chain that just simply highlights some cells of interest. Shows you kind of what the market is doing. Now, before you get all excited, this comes with zero support. It is free of charge, but zero support. And guess what? It is not nearly as powerful as Magic. It's a very condensed version. Full source code is provided. And some people have had a hard time getting this running, especially on Mac. So to get around that, I've automated it. It's the third chart. We'll cover this later. It's called the Sonar chart. All right, let's go down into the members section. Now you got Gen Chat. This is just where everybody kind of hangs out. And then journals. This is kind of a new feature. And this is what I would really recommend you check out. 
because everybody has the ability to make their own journal. And this is where people often live trade. So for example, if we go into Brian's butterflies, this is typically where I'll post a butterfly. You'll see that people are actually actively in there trading right now. And we do post the real trades along with profits and all of the goodness that you'd expect to see in there. But don't just stop into this channel, you know, check out the journals in all their glory. There's a ton of them out there and there's some really smart people making some awesome trades out there. I tend to just kind of sneak peek every single channel because I love to see what the community is doing. And then from there, we have different channels like future risk management, option fills, strategies, profits at loss, so on and so on. We do have a developer section where I encourage if you know any development to just stop in and say hi. Um, sometime in the future, I may open parts of this up for other developers, um, and I am considering making an API in the next version. I'll talk about that at the very end of the video. And if people just can't get along, we do have a fight club and a break room. All right, reports. This is where we get, you know, all of the historical information where people say, you know, like, what's the best time of day? What's the best day of the week? That kind of stuff. We post all these reports down here and then a bunch of us go in here and crank these reports out and make them just awesome. Now, education, this takes a little bit of explanation here. So if I just click in one, you'll see that each one of these is run by a different person. So like here's earning with zero DTE. There's by the numbers with Vance, Lauren and Patrick. And then we have others you know, like you have option Sandy, and then we have some community members. So basically what the education section is, is different people that have decided to help the community because I am not an expert in options trading, but these people are. So you have all of these channels you can go in and start learning from actual industry experts. It's absolutely an amazing resource. I'm in here all the time asking questions. So for example, Axe Options, my buddies over at Axe, love their videos. I almost always make sure their newer videos are put in here, or at least they get a shout out. All right. You also have the live feed. Now the live feed is, like I said, very, very simple. Of course, I can't click on that because my microphone is disabled, but we can watch this stream real fast. And we can see that this is the actual magic sonar. I have it on a live feed for those of the people that can't get it running. I'm going to disconnect from that. Now, this is what you're probably looking for, the predictions. And it comes in two flavors. Predictions version 137, this is the newest version. And then you have this legacy 136. And it takes a little bit of an explanation here. So 137 is the current version. And don't worry, we're gonna walk through all of this. But you just open up the 137, you pick the underlying that you want. For example, I'm on SPX and you go to the very bottom and there's the newest set of predictions. Now 136 is the older version. See, 137 had a major overhaul to it. So people got nervous and they said, can you keep the older version running for a while? And I did. So this will eventually get phased out as it's the legacy version, as people more and more adopt and trust version 137. And then of course we have some archive channels, some terms and conditions and things like that. So if you kind of, you know, glazed over a lot of that, the major highlights here is check out the user guide, check out PDT hacks, check out the journals, obviously say hi in gen chat, and then go down to the predictions. And if you get lost or you have questions, or if you just need special help, we have a bunch of mentors in here that can help you out. Okay, so let's dissect the predictions. They seem a little daunting. So we're gonna scroll up and you'll see newer predictions come in as the software updates every five minutes. This is just SPX. You can click on any of these underlyings you want. Special note to the logs down here. This is the end of day report that gets generated automatically. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on the actual forecasts and predictions. So each one is split into a few different sections. You have what I call the one liner or the title right at the very top, which says the current price is, the trend is, and it's closing near and will range between these numbers. Then we have metrics right here. Honestly, these metrics are more for me. It helps me debug the system and figure out what the heck's going on. So when it has a great day, I can dive and go, okay, what happened? And if it has a bad day, I can again say, what just happened? Then you have a simple three-day forecast. This is often a source of confusion because this is not actually magic. This is a mini prediction. Um, you'll see this change. And so don't bet your life savings on this. This has not really been back tested or even analyzed in any real depth. Just this tells me a general market direction over the next three days. You can see at the current time, the market direction is up. This will change. Then you have the example trades. 
Now these are just it, examples. These things, honestly, when I first built the software, people said, I don't know how to trade this. I don't understand the charts. What do I do? So I just slapped a trading system onto the side of that. And this is the example trades. And we're going to go into the logs and we're going to really deep dive into the metrics on these later. But these are the actual trades. Now these are copy and pasteable. And what I mean by that is you can actually highlight it, copy it, and put it into Thinkorswim desktop. And I'll cover that later in the video. But I just wanted to highlight that. Now, unfortunately, most other brokers and softwares don't even allow the copy and paste. So for example, the Thinkorswim web or mobile, you can't do that. It's only the desktop version of Thinkorswim. I wish the other brokers would allow it and adopt it. it makes it super simple. But anyways, we've got a butterfly, an iron condor, a sonar, which is just a better version of the iron condor, and a vertical. So you can just jump in, pick the trade you want, and go. And then we have the charts. And don't worry, we're going to cover each one of these in depth because they are pretty complex. But you have the magic chart, which is kind of like an all-in-one Swiss Army knife. You have the quad chart, which dissects the market at a very high level. And then, of course, that sonar chart. Now, this replaces that live stream, so you don't even need to look at the live stream. Honestly, I may disable the live stream in the future. And this gives you a snapshot of where the market is, where it's going, and what we think is going to happen. You see in the background, it just updated. And you can see in real time, this updates every five minutes. All right, looking at the predictions that are generated every five minutes, it gets a little confusing. Now, you can really kind of hone this into a few parts. You have what I call the text wall, the trades, and then the charts. So let's focus in on the text wall here. Why does this even exist? I mean, what's the point of this? Well, the title just gives you a snapshot of what we think is going to happen. Now, remember, this is a forecasting slash prediction engine, so this will change. You know, don't log in at 9.35 in the morning. Expect this is where SPX is going to close. This does adapt with the market. And this right here is the source of a lot of confusion. So I'm going to try to unconfuse it as much as I can. All right, we've got the snapshot of what is happening, which is just simply where is the price, where is the trend, where we think it's going to close near, and then the range that we expect. Now, you know, this is not financial advice. I have to put that out there because somebody out there will say, well, Magic said this. No, this is not financial advice. And then we just break this stuff out. We have the current price. We have the current trend. We have the predicted close. Now, this is experimental. You notice these numbers are different. So we have 5758, and then we have 5750. There's like an $8.38 difference. Why? This is a more granular prediction that I am working on. So typically what I like to do is be very transparent and then throw things out for the general public to see as I'm working on them. And I did flag this one as experimental. This one from testing seems to be a bit more accurate, but you see they're still fairly close. They're $8 off. Now I have to note, this is actually election day, probably the worst day for me to record a video because somebody's going to come in and go, oh, you said it was going to be 57.50 and it ended up at like 5,800 or something. I expect the market to be crazy today. All right, so we have a relative strength. Now, what is that strength? That is the pull of, that the market has. So we have a 0.25% pull, meaning we expect that price action to move at a 0.25%. And then Magic actually has a couple different forecasts here. We have the short term and the long term, and each one has a predicted value and the actual bias. So both short term and long term are saying bullish, so we expect the market to go up. And we're actually sitting here saying they're going to be pretty similar. So we're saying, you know, 57.65, 57.67. You notice these are all different than this number, and this is why people get so frustrated. Which number do you look at? Honestly, these are all separate predictions right here. There's actually three main predictions, so I would be a little cautious. I always look at this closing near because that gives me the most conservative value where these tend to be a little bit overestimating on what's going to happen. And then I have calls versus puts and then the actual center or what I call market center or true market center. So think of this as like a tug of war. You have the calls and the puts both tugging at the price and then there's the center. The range is the expected range. Now, this is totally different than what your broker is going to say. So don't even try to compare that to your broker. This is a calculation that I'm doing. Target one and target two. These take a little bit of explanation. You'll see these on the charts. We try to define multiple targets. Now, target one is where the price is going to gravitate to. 
Target two is the next in line, meaning as target two grows in strength, you'll see that price moving towards it. You'll often notice the trend lines up with the targets. So for example, you see the trend is up, bullish, bullish, and target one is lower than target two. So we're expecting target two to take over and become target one in the future. So that price action is going to move up. Now, delta, gamma, interest, sonar, and volume, these are internal metrics that I use for testing. And the way magic works is it looks at the options chain and the market in its totality and then tries to reverse engineer it. And there is, um, if I remember correctly, about 16 different metrics that it's really focused in on, but these are the big ones. And we'll talk about the quad chart in depth, but think of it like a table. You have to have four legs for that market to stand up. And that would be delta, gamma, interest, and volume. Sonar is a custom calculation, and it is that magic sonar chart, this guy right here. All right, now forecasts. Well, forecasts we've talked about a little bit. This is just a very, very quick calculation of what the software thinks gonna happen in the next three days. And people often ask, how accurate is this? It has not been back tested. It has not been monitored. It just comes with as is, no warranty or guarantee of any kind. This is just the software trying to guess in the next three days what the market's going to do based on current conditions. And you guessed it because the market's ripping up. It thinks the next three days are going to go up. However, sometimes you'll see it'll say up, down, up. And what that could mean is that it's going to range. And the example trades, everybody's favorite. These are just examples. Um, everybody likes to consider these like the holy grail. They're honestly just examples, guys. You can and you should make your own trades. So for example, if this butterfly is just too pricey for you, you can take that center strike, this guy right here, and then adjust your longs to get the price you want. A lot of people do that. Iron condors, for example, may just be a little too big for you, and that's fine. You can adjust the strikes as needed. These are just examples. This is what the software is saying, hey, if I was sitting at my desk trading, this is the trade that I would consider doing. Now, butterflies have been massively overhauled in this system. Compared to the previous versions, this has a much higher accuracy rate. And I want to put a special note out here in the journals. I have Brian's butterfly. That seems to be a hot topic here. And other people have started opening butterfly channels as well because butterflies in the system are a very hot topic. They have a much better risk to reward ratio than iron condors, sonars, or verticals. Iron condors, and we'll talk about all these trades, but these are what are called super wide or ultra wide iron condors. So they have a very low reward to a very high risk. And we'll look at these in depth. I don't like those iron condors, so I developed sonar, which runs off of this sonar calculation, this third chart, completely different algorithm than this iron condor. And then verticals, these are kind of the workhorse in the system. These are kind of old faithful. Um, these are what I use almost daily. And this is just simply, you know, is the market going up or down? Let's take a look at the first chart. This is called the magic chart. And it just says magic eight ball for SPX or whatever underlying you're on. Now this looks really, really busy. And I apologize for that. So let's blow this thing up. All right. You notice the blue profile, this is sonar. This is that custom calculation that tries to figure out what the market's doing. This is different than volume profiling and things of that nature. This is a custom calculation. But from there, you see these large spikes become target one, target two down here at the bottom, these target one, target two. So you can see that target one is this guy right here at 57.50, at least at the time of this recording. Now, you see how this is much thicker? That means it's got more numbers or more metrics. I don't wanna call it volume, but it's got more power behind it. And this is target two at 57.80. So we're expecting this to push up to target two. Typically what you'll see is the market, you know, early to midday, will kind of bounce between target one and target two. And you'll see these flip around, like target two may jump down here. And that's when the market does that serpentine thing that everybody loves. But if target two is up here and it's got kind of this power behind it, we're expecting that price to slowly pull up to target two. And then target two becomes target one. And then this node would shrink becoming target two. And then you'll see it gravitate up here and kind of bounce down towards target two. Now, as the day goes on, target one becomes very, very pronounced, and it's very easy to figure out where it's going to go. Um, you'll notice on the smaller underlying, so let's, let's go down to like SPY, for example, it's much easier to see what's going on here on this chart. 
you have a much bigger spike and you see it gravitate towards it. Whereas the larger underlyings like NDX, it's a little harder to see what's going on. But again, you just have target one, target two, and this price will bounce between these, but always gravitate towards the larger node or the one that has the more strength to it. So we're gonna go back here and let's take a look at this again. So the blue line sonar, the targets, while confusing, just understand there's only two of them. And the target one is the strongest, target two is where the price is going to want to go to, or I should say the other opponent in the tug of war that's pulling at that price. This is almost a perfect illustration because you can see the price is pulling up towards that target two and it has more power, it's thicker than this guy. Then you have short-term and long-term predictions. And these are often the source of a lot of confusion. I apologize. I honestly want to clean this up and just have one prediction to rule them all. Short term is this bright green, and you can see it often tracks right around target one. Tar uh, long term is the darker green, and that will kind of do its own thing. And usually it's around target two, but you'll see like target two will flip down here and the long term stays up here. The difference between these two is, well, profound. Short term is what we're expecting now, anywhere between right now to like within an hour or two, where long term is looking more at like the end of day and maybe even in tomorrow. So if you're towards the end of the day, it's actually looking at the next day. So what this is saying, the market started kind of depressed and as time went on, we're expecting to pull up. But now that power is really waning and it's almost going to intersect with our short term. That means that upward mobility is really starting to wind down a little bit. And you can kind of see that with a price action. It shot up and now it's just kind of stalling, which is this bright pink line. You have your time at the bottom and you have your strikes. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's take a look at the quad chart. This is often the source of confusion. And let's really deep dive into this thing and clear this up. The way magic works is it views the options chain in its totality and there's like I think 16 major indicators that it looks at but these are the big four think of this like a four-legged table you have to have each leg of the table for the table to stand up this is the market right here so you have volume interest gamma and delta and we're going to dissect each one of these so volume is you guessed it volume so if you're into volume profile analysis we've already done the work for you it's right here the red is the puts the green is the calls we have the red line indicating the highest put, the green line indicating the highest call, and then you can see where they intersect right here. It also does a mini prediction, which is this gold line. The magenta line is the price, and you can see the price is pretty close. Now, this is a mini prediction, and what magic does is it looks at all of these metrics and then combines them into, you guessed it, the short term, the long term, and the experimental forecast. So, Volume has its mini prediction right here. And then interest is simply open interest. This is where, you know, you guessed it, people are interested in the market. And we have this huge spike at 5,700 on the puts. And then you know, calls are kind of all over the place, but it has more power. You notice how it's much thicker over here. So the calls are currently pulling this price up, which explains why the price action is moving up. And you have the price action and the mini prediction. Now you may be wondering, well, how is that mini prediction calculated? It's calculated by the relative strength of both the calls and the puts, and it says, where's the center? And then offsets it the center based off the strength and does some other custom calculations as well. Now, gamma and delta take a little bit of explaining. Gamma is actually gamma exposure or GEX. So a lot of people are like, well, I wish GEX was in the system. It's right here, guys. It's gamma on the quad chart. So you don't need to go jumping to third-party software. It's literally right here. This is gamma exposure. Now, some people love gamma because it tells them exactly where that price wants to go immediately. And you can see both puts and calls are centered on 5750. So the market wants to go here. And that's where the prediction is. That's actually where the calls, the puts, and the predict all say it's going to go. But you notice the price is up here. That's because these other elements are playing tug of war at it. Delta... This is a custom calculation. I believe it's called the whale score. Um, really, it looks at what we think the market's going to do in a longer term. And you'll notice, at least in this quad chart right here, calls and puts are almost mirroring each other. The market's really ripping towards 5750, and that's where the predict is. You won't always see these line up so perfectly. Sometimes, like, you know, gamma will be over here and delta will be way over here somewhere. And that's where that delicate tug of war comes into play. 
you'll notice each one of these has a name, for example, volume, and then it has what type of prediction. So this is bullish, and then it's mini prediction. So you don't even have to really analyze a chart. You can just look right at the title. Volume's bullish, interest is bullish, gamma and delta are both bullish. And then it's got the different metrics or the different predictions for each one. So you can use this a number of ways. So for example, if you believe wholeheartedly in volume analysis, you can go with the 5752. However, if you believe wholeheartedly in gamma exposure, you can go with the 5750. You notice at the time of this recording, these line up pretty closely. And you can do the same thing for interest and delta. Magic does the hard work for you. It takes these four along with all the other metrics in the background and combines them into the short term, the long term, and experimental forecasts. So you don't have to do any of the math. It's literally done for you. All you have to do, you guessed it, is just pick what you want to look at, whether it's here or here or here. I personally will use the quad chart to evaluate my trades. So for example, if I put a vertical on, I will watch GAX to see in real time where that market wants to go. If I put a longer term trade, like a, that's like an iron condor or something, I'll typically watch Delta. And usually I'll watch volume and interest to see how the market's changing. So for example, if these lines start shifting around real rapidly, I know the market's changing rapidly with it. Okay, let's take a look at the sonar chart. I'm gonna go down to the newest one here. All of this seems super confusing and I wanted to simplify it. So I made something called sonar, which is a modified version of gamma exposure. And here is the current chart for this date and time. You can see you have the sonar profile in blue. You have target one, target two, along with a biased and a relative strength. And you have the price right here. It makes it super simple. So here's the price. You have these two spikes. You can see that target one highlighted right here. This is where the price wants to go. But target two is going to play tug of war and pull that price up, which is why the price is above target one, because it's being pulled by target two. Almost how the moon pulls at the tides. Now, if target two were to shift down here, you would see the price action shift below this target one pull and start gravitating a little bit towards target two. So how do you use this chart? I like to spot check my trades. So for example, if I had an iron condor that took the bulk of this, I would say, okay, is target one within my profit tent? And same thing for butterflies. Now verticals, I would say, for example, if I had a vertical where I wanted the market to go up, I would just make sure that like, let's say I was in at 5720, I would want it to stay above 5720. And I would watch target two to see where it stays relative to target one. And if it shifted against me, like if target one dropped down to 5700, I know, hey, maybe I need to manage my trade. The whole point of the sonar chart is to make all of this ridiculously simple. You can literally just look and go, yep, we're on track. Things are going good. And then compare it to your profit tent in your trade. Let's take a look at trades and let's demystify these. Now, these are just example trades. You don't have to do these. You can do anything you want. But these are for people that say, hey, I'm new to trading or, you know, what does magic actually think? So let's take a look at each one of these. I want you to understand what they are and why they exist. We're gonna scroll down to the newest one and let's just copy this butterfly. So you're gonna copy all the way from the buy, all the way to the end of the T, right click and copy. Now this copy feature is only supported on Thinkorswim desktop, I'm sorry. Nothing else really supports this. I wish they did. Now how do you paste this in here? Like it's not in the chart, you can't right click, you can't really do anything, you know, what do you do? So what I would recommend is you click analyze and go to risk profile. And then this little button down here on your screen, it may look like this, but usually it's hidden. So you click this and if it's in saved orders, you won't see it. So you have to click on order entry and you get this little paste icon like that. Boom. You're not done yet. Now right click it and analyze it and it throws it into the analyzer. I can now delete that off the clipboard and voila, here's our butterfly. Another thing you can do is you can go to set slices and then break even on the next day and it shows you where your break evens are. And this little nubby right here, I don't know if the screen's picking it up, that's the current price. Now the blue line is end of day, the pink line is the profit curve or time decay. And you can see that represented in this box over here. So as I move the mouse, you'll see that box change numbers and you'll see the number on the screen. So for example, if you would enter the trade right now, you'd instantly be profitable by, by 46 bucks. No broker in the world is going to just give you 46 bucks. So click that unlock icon and it drops it down to the current price and you can see the profit curve changes with it. 
Then once you find a price that's reasonable, lock it, right click, confirm and send. Now make sure this is the right trade for you before you do any of that. The basic premise here is there's two ways of trading magic. You can either run at the expiration, which is how it is in all of the logs. So when we talk about accuracy and we're gonna go through the logs in depth, we're talking about end of day expiration, or you can take profit as it comes. So for example, if this price were to drop, I would take that $213. You see that, that number right there? So as the price dropped, you'd gain more and more money because you're towards your center. Remember, every trade has risk and reward. So if you're watching this black box down here, the most you're gonna squeeze out of this butterfly is about two grand, but you're risking about 1945. So if this trade goes against you, you're gonna lose money. And you can actually lose money while it's in the profit tent if you eject too early. So you have to make sure these trades are right for you. Definitely examine the risk and reward and make sure it's the right strategy for you. All right, now you can check and uncheck these to show these in the analyzer and you'll see me do that. So for example, I'm going to uncheck it and now we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab an iron condor. People tend to love condors because they are so accurate in the system. You'll see you know, 95 to 100% accuracy on condors for a reason. They are huge. The problem is there's so much of this condor you see these lines represented the break even on the butterfly. There's so much of this thing. You're only making, if you look at this box, $32 and you're risking 468. So the risk to reward on these is abysmal. And if you unlock it, you'll see you lose even more money because the price is changing. So here we're doing 25 bucks, risking 475. Not a good risk to reward. But if we set those slices to break even, you'll see you have this huge area to play with versus that butterfly. I personally don't like iron condors because when it goes against you, it goes against you very rapidly and you lose a lot of money very quickly. And one full loss on an iron condor, you will lose months worth of profit on successful condors. That's why I typically don't trade them. Now to negate that problem, I created what are called sonars. Sonars are also iron condors, but they are calculated strictly off this sonar chart using target one, target two. So you'll see the strike slightly different and you see better premium. So we're gonna copy this. I'm gonna go here, paste that in, analyze it. And you see the dotted lines or the break evens on the other condor and you have a lot less profit tent, but you have more premium, you're already $83. So even if I unlock it, and lock it, you're still three times more profit than the other one. But of course you have a smaller surface area to work with, but you're risking about the same amount. The accuracy on these sonars really rivals the verticals. So let's take a look at the vertical real quick. I personally love the verticals. I consider these the workhorse of the system. And we're gonna just paste that in, analyze that trade. And there's your vertical in all of its glory. Magic thinks the market's going up, so it creates a vertical showing that direction. It's pretty much at the break even right now. And we could play around the price if we wanted, lock it in, confirm and send. Again, you just right click and confirm and send. If you get like what I call this modern art masterpiece, it's usually because you have multiple trades selected. Just uncheck them to show the one you want. And you can, of course, delete them as well to really simplify your screen. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you here. Let's say you screw up, because I screw up quite often, to be honest with you. And we only get part of the trade when we go to copy that. You're going to see something like this. No order in clipboard. That just simply means you missed something. You didn't copy the whole thing, or you got an extra space at the end, or something like that. And other times, especially on some of these instruments that just don't want to like really work with me, you're gonna see where it will say order not found or item not traded or something like that. That means that magic's generating a trade that your broker simply doesn't support. Just grab different strikes and you should be good to go. You'll also notice that some of these underlyings are not highlighted. So for example, Apple and Tesla are not highlighted. What's going on here? And the last time they were traded was on 11.1 .1 and it's currently November 5th. That's because this is a zero DTE system. So it's only gonna generate zero DTE trades. And at the end of every day, it generates this nice log, this beautiful scorecard that shows you exactly what happened on that day, each underlying, each trade, and the accuracy for each. And you can see some days are better than others. Like this was a really, really bad day. The market really moved. 
The other day, not bad. Another day, not bad. And we're going to deep dive into the logs, but I just wanted to show you that this daily automated log does exist. Now, this does come with a free version, but unfortunately, you're going to get what you pay for. The free version, well, it's free and it only updates every 30 minutes. It does not have example trades or metrics or anything that you would hope for. It just shows you a couple charts and says this is what Magic thinks is going on in the moment. The community is also wholeheartedly, I love you guys in the free server, but you gotta start talking more. There's almost no action in the free server. Um, the free server is just a lot of people that wanted to come check it out. And unfortunately, the free version doesn't really live up to the paid version. If you really want the full experience, join the paid version. You get 30 days risk-free. You don't even get billed for 30 days. Cancel at any time. Uh, the free version, again, is just people coming in. They wanted to check it out without pumping a credit card into it, and that's totally fine. Uh, but I would highly recommend you check out the paid version because it's much more powerful, and the community is vastly more interactive. Okay, let's take a look at logs in this system. Now, you get the end of day logs at the bottom of the predictions for both 137 and 136. And it comes with two things. It comes with a scorecard and a zip file. But I wanted to point out, if you scroll up and you look at reports, there's also this historical section. This is where I'll put like an entire year's worth of logs or an entire month and I'll do back testing and things of that nature. Then there's log chats, log results. We got some community members out there that do some amazing work. So for example, shout out to Jed, J26. He does some amazing work in here. And we have charts and things of that nature. We just try looking at the information in different ways. But what I'm gonna focus on is the actual log. So you get the scorecard in all of its beauty. And it gives you a snapshot of what the day looked like. And every day is different. So for example, here was the previous day. And you can keep going and going and going. Now, we're going to download this zip file. And let's jump to my downloads folder and expand that out. And we get a couple different files here. So for example, we get the Delta tracking log. This is just for me, it helps me figure out what happened in the system. So if the range is way off, I can go back through the Delta tracking. The ones you really want are these two guys right here, profit and score. So a score is literally that scorecard. Trades, this is literally just the same thing as profit, just everything's broken out with much more detail, like it has target one, target two, and things like that in there. So let's look at the profit log. And this is what the vast majority of you are going to want. It has the day, the hour, the underlying, the price, the trade, the predicted value, low, high, close, the risk, the reward, the premium, and of course, stopped, raw and managed. Did you pick these last two up, raw and managed? Let's take a look at these. Of course, the very last one is the actual trade, but let's pick apart raw and manage because this is what you're going to really want to focus in on. Raw is how the system looks, and we're going to deep dive into some logs later, but raw is you take the trade from the moment it was generated and you run it all the way to end of day, and that's what it would have been. So for example, this RUT butterfly would have lost $880. Managed, however, looks at the end of day close and said, what would potentially have happened if you had managed it? And it would have only been a $264 loss. This does not manage it intraday, meaning it doesn't say, oh, it would have stopped out at this day and this time. That's something I'm going to build in for version two. But for version one, it just simply looks at the closed. Personally, I ignore managed altogether. I don't even look at it. So I'm just going to highlight that in red. I look at the raw column because that is the most helpful for me. So for example, this right here, this butterfly would have netted $2,046. You'll notice it's the same thing in manage because what manage does is says if it would not have stopped out, just let it run to end of day. It doesn't do any profit collection. So when in doubt, you can safely ignore managed. It's just in there to give people a warm, fuzzy feeling. I look at raw because I want to see exactly what happened. And if you look at these, I'm going to get rid of these color codes here. This log has every single trade the system generated. And I do mean every single trade. Everything you see on the screen is in these logs. And at the very end, you get a mini version of that scorecard where it will show you like, let's look at SPX. <clears throat> you have 308 total trades with 242 wins, 66 losses. 
with a total accuracy of 78%. And then it breaks it down into profit and then butterflies were 51, how much profit from butterflies, iron condors, so on and so on. The, the thought process people get here is, oh, I'm going to take every butterfly this thing generates. Don't do that. You're going to completely just destroy your account, even if you had the buying power to do it. What you want to do is pick a date, or I should say pick a time that works for you. Like I tend to focus around like a 1030 entry because that's what works with my system. Uh, I should say my schedule because I'm busy. I got things to do. So I'll typically do like a 1030 butterfly. And on that day, it would have lost out. But if I would have done like a vertical, it also would have lost out. Now, the point I'm making here is the system's not perfect. Unlike most people, I'm not going to show you all the rainbows and kittens. I'm going to show you the ugly things too. And we're going to dive through the logs and really dissect these and find the hot entry points. For example, if you go into the server, you will find some of these journals. People really look for specific times like 1440. Let's just jump in here. Yeah, like 1030, 1040 strikes are better. So people are already picking out times that they believe are the best entry points. All right, in this video, we're going to deep dive through the 136 production logs. Now, this is what if. And but what do I mean by what if? This is what if you had taken one trade a day at that time for the entire time span of this log? And you would find different, well, you guessed it, different profits, different losses. So this thing's a hot mess because it's got everything in it. Let's filter it down a little bit. You can feel free to download these logs from the actual server, but we're going to go to standard filter. We're going to take a symbol and we're going to just micro focus on SPX. Ta -da. Now what we can do is we can see that we have it based off time. So at 935, the first forecast comes out and it goes all the way out to end of day. And this is the accuracy rating for each time slot. So what I like to do is I'll go in here and I'll say sort descending. So now we can see that, yep, you guessed it. Butterflies typically tend to be more accurate towards the end of the day. And I'll find one that works for me. Now you may notice if you go in here and you sort by profit, it doesn't necessarily line up. So for example, you have 61% accuracy made less than the 59%. And that's because of the premium changes, the butterflies reshape. So what I'll typically do is I'll look for an entry point. So for example, 1345, or let's go with 1355 right here. Now, if you're wondering what that is, just subtract it by 12 and that gives you the exact time. So for example, a 1420 is 220 Eastern time in the afternoon. So this would be a 155 had a 62% chance of winning and you would have totally profited with $34,000 by the end of the year, just taking one trade a day. Then you have your nice risk to reward ratio. The higher that number, the better. You can see condors don't look nearly as good. So the reason why is because remember condors have a huge risk for very little reward. So when you take a loss, it's a huge slap in the face. But even with that loss, there are condors that are profitable. So for example, the 1120 condor, you would have taken one condor a day with zero management, even taking full loss on those days, you still would have walked away with $1,700. I don't know about you, I'd rather have the bigger number than the smaller number, which is why I don't trade condors. Uh, sonar is just a better condor. So you can say like at the 1540, that would be 20 minutes before market close, you would have made 86% chance of winning with $3,148. And verticals, of course, at uh, 135 Eastern Standard Time, you would have a 90% chance with $5,146 with a ratio of 0.16. The thing I wanna really highlight here though is that there really is no perfect entry time. There really isn't. I'm sorry, there just isn't. So, so for example, if we sort the verticals by like descending and we just highlight these, we'll just highlight the first couple over 88%, right? Put those in green. Now we sort this by, you guessed it, our time. So we're gonna data sort ascend and you'll see those times are actually spread out during the day. So there's kind of a fallacy that, you know, you gotta have the best entry time. And you'll see right around the 1030 mark is one of the hot entry times. This is typically what I trade is around 1030 because that's when my break is at work. I can just log in, go click, click, and then walk away. 
But there's also like around lunchtime seems to be a hot spot. Look at this right here around 130 to 150, 90 to 88 percent big profit. And then, of course, at the end of the day, and you can do that for each one of these. So, for example, you can see the hot times on butterflies and so on and so on. This is the 136 log. The difference between 136 and 137 is I did a major overhaul in 137, the current version. So what we're going to look at in the next section is a back test of 137 using 136's data. Let's take a look at the 137 back test. So what I did is I took the newest version of Magic, which has much more accuracy than the older version, and back tested it against all the old 136 data. And this is the what if file for that. And we're going to, you guessed it, sort sending and let's set this thing by filter so we're going to standard filter let's say spx and i've already got some highlights in here so it's pretty much the same thing as the 136 where you have different entry points and i've sorted this based off you guessed it profit because that's what we're here for is to make money and you can see there's some hot zones for the butterfly right around the 1020 1030 the 1125, a huge chunk around between like 130 and 2. And then you've got your end of day stuff. And you can see these green areas don't always line up. So, for example, a hot zone for butterflies may not be a hot zone for condors. And verticals, of course, have a much bigger hot zone because you're just simply saying, is the market going up or down? Now, one thing I like to play around is what if, you know? So let's just take this butterfly and let's go sort descending. So if we did the 1335 or the 135 Eastern Standard Time, we had a 65% chance of winning those trades. We would have made $44,000 if we'd taken one trade a day, simply taken the trade and walked away. No risk management, no nothing, just boom. That's what it would have been was $44,000. That's nuts. That's a huge increase from previous versions. Now, not everything is happy in Condor land here. So for example... You can see condors, of course, five minutes before close. No one's going to ever get you that trade. We're extremely accurate. But if we took something a little bit more realistic, like maybe a, you know, a 120 in the afternoon, you would have only made $476 for the entire back test period. And I believe that back test period was from 123.24 or January 23rd, 24, all the way up to the end of October. So iron condor is not super profitable because of the drawdown when you lose. So risk management really becomes key. And this chart, or I should say the spreadsheet, really highlights what can happen. So a lot of people come in and go, I'm going to do condors because they're accurate. You can see the accuracy rate is off the chart, but you lose your backside. You know, you get eaten up really fast. Sonars, try to take some of that away. So we're going to go, boom. At 150, you would have made 3,000 just taking a single trade a day. It's that simple. Vertical, same thing you would have made over $5,000 at 150 in the afternoon on a vertical with an 88% chance. You notice that's 88%. These are not guaranteed, meaning that 22 can and does happen. That 22% can and does happen. So definitely manage your trades. Now, I like to just kind of poke around these logs. So for example, this blew my mind. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just sort ascending. And now I want to do a different underlying. And I'm going to take NDX because NDX is kind of the big boy here. All right, you see some numbers. Now I want to see what was the most profitable NDX one. Boom, look at that right there. You would have made $79,000 taking the 1015 butterfly every single day, just clicking a button and walking away. You would have made that. That is absolutely insane. $79,000 just by clicking a button. This is the back tested data. So I can't honestly wholeheartedly say this is a thousand percent accurate because we're taking old data and running it against the new predictive models. But that's what it would have done. I find this absolutely mind blowing. You would have had a 43% chance. Now, what that means is there would be drawdown. And this is the big problem with any system is you're going to have drawdown. So with NDX, I think I calculated it's about 15,000 max drawdown. So if you don't have 15,000 to burn, NDX really isn't for you. 
You have to remember with the risk comes the reward. So pick the trade that's right for you. Smaller accounts are gonna to wanna to stick towards something like XSP or SPY. I tend to stick with SPX. Those of you that got some money might wanna check out NDX. But again, you gotta look at the risk versus the reward. They're only 43% accurate versus like if we went with a vertical, you would have had 81 or 87% accurate. Now you notice that even with the 81% accurate, you can still lose money. That's the drawdown. That's why you don't wanna run these to max loss. So this is a great example right here. 81% accurate, but you still lost four grand. That's because you would have run those to complete end of day expiration. I mean, you would have taken the full total loss, which no one in their right mind would do. You wanna use stop loss. Cut your losers early, take your winners. Let's take a look at 137 production. And what that means is this is actual real metrics that came out of the system. And this is the what if file again that tells you if you're taking a trade at a specific time, what would it have been? So for example, the SPX butterflies, if you would have taken the 1105 or the 1110, you would have made about 15 to $16,000 just by clicking a button once a day and you had an 80% chance of accuracy. Now this is the entire month of October, so it was just completely rock that month. Remember, because version 137 is still relatively new, this is a small sample set, which is why I did that back test. Not every month is gonna do this good. It's literally the same thing. You can sit here and hunt and peck for profitability. So for example, we can just sort descending. Those would have been your hot times for butterflies in the production over October. Condors, same thing. Let's look at profitability. You can see so far, because we haven't gone too far, we haven't had a lot of drawdown with condors. That'll change as the year goes on and the market moves. Same thing with sonars and verticals and so on and so on. So you may be asking yourself, well, which one of these metrics do I follow? Do I follow 136? Do I follow the back test or do I follow 137? I personally follow the back test. Why? Because you have a much larger data set and it's using the current engine with historical data. Unfortunately, historical data does not represent what's going to happen in the future. So for example, let's say this 1235 butterfly may not necessarily be a hot entry time. But the main takeaway from all of these log videos that I wanted to show you is that you can make money just simply by clicking a button. So even if you didn't have a hot time here, you know, let's take uh, this guy right here, 1255, you would have had a 75% chance of making money every single day running this to max expiration you still would have made ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars just by clicking a button and that's making one trade running to expiration no stress now in the real world you would not run it to expiration i know i sound like a broken record but people come in here all the time run something to expiration lose a trade and go up oh, the system doesn't work you have to manage your trades risk management is key in any system. But what I'm showing you overall is even though this is early access software and it's still fairly new, you can make some real profits here. Like 1245 SPX, 80% chance butterfly, $10,000 just by clicking a button. So these logs are available in the server. I encourage you to download them and go through them yourselves. Okay, so quite literally the million dollar question, how do you use this software? I cannot give you financial advice, but I can tell you as the software developer, how I use it and how I see the community members using it. So the first thing is decide what you wanna do. Do you want high risk, high reward, like a butterfly? Do you want low risk, low reward, like a vertical? Or do you want some hybrid in between, like a sonar or iron condor or something of that nature? And then decide when to take the trade. There's a, a false belief that there's like the best time to enter. I see this constantly. People come in and go, what's the best time to trade? There's no best time. I'm sorry, there's just not. Uh, there's pockets of time that the system's more accurate than others and the profitability's better than others. Like uh, 10.30 to 10.45 Eastern Standard Time. I would actually widen that to 10.15 to 10.45, that half hour time frame. And then from like 1.15 to 1.45 in that time frame and the end of day market. And these line up with people's lives. So like, you know, 1015 to 1030, that's when most big banks and industries have already entered their trades and the market's kind of stabilized and figure out where it's wanting to go. 
And then again, 115 to 145, that's when people are coming back from lunch and getting back into the market. So the market again is figuring out where it wants to go. And then end of day, of course, the big bank's algorithms kick in and then the market does its thing. But those seem to be the most accurate times. But you, you can jump in at any time. You can come in at 11.20 and make a ton of money if you, and here's the other key point, follow proper risk management. All of the metrics, accuracies, profitability, everything that we've talked about is fire and forget, meaning you take the trade, you send it to your broker, and you walk out the door and go do something else. Don't do that in real life. Manage your trades, follow proper risk management. Um, nothing is guaranteed and the system's not 100%. So you will have days and even consecutive days where it will go against you. That's called drawdown. Um, like the $79,000 uh, 1015 NDX butterfly that we talked about at the very beginning of this. Everybody's like, I wanna do that. Do you have the account size to handle a sixteen to $20,000 drawdown? Because if you don't, you shouldn't be playing around with those. I'm sorry, that's just a hard fact. Nothing in life is free and nothing is guaranteed. So just understand there's risk and reward in this. All right, I'll get off my soapbox about risk versus reward for now. Um, but copy and paste the trade, meaning if you're on the Thinkorswim desktop, we've covered that in the previous section, you just literally copy and paste it. If you don't have Thinkorswim desktop or you're on a different platform, you can just take the strikes and plug them into your broker and then find the premium and get good to go. I personally use Thinkorswim Desktop and I don't know of any other platform that allows copy and paste, so I, unfortunately I can't answer that question whether like you could do it with uh, Tastyworks or Interactive Broker. I don't use them, I'm sorry, I just don't know. Um, once you send the order in, uh, watch the analyzer and watch Magic. Um, just sit there and say, hey, is my trade gonna win? So for example, if I take a vertical and I'm saying the market's gonna go up, so like I put in a, a, a put spread and I'm watching the market go up, if Magic slowly says, oh, target one is way, way down below you know, my break-even point, that's when I start looking and going, mm, do I want to exit this trade because I don't want the market to go against me and then take a full loss on my vertical. So key is manage your trades. And then uh, lastly, chat with other traders. I mean, the benefit of this Discord group, it is absolutely huge and it is packed with so much knowledge. I mean, you've got like, I think 15 different mentors. And those are just the mentors. The community is in the hundreds. Um, I actually think we broke a thousand members and I'm, I'm learning from people I never would have met in the real world. It's ridiculous. Like I'll pop in there with a question at like two in the morning and say, hey guys, I can't sleep. I got a question and there's somebody online answering me. It's nuts. So if you're a part of the community, I absolutely love you guys. I love being a part of this team and I look forward to making more money with you. All right, this is a section on risk management. I wanted to make this its own section because I see this consistently. Somebody will watch a video or they'll hear word of mouth, they'll come in, they'll take a trade blindly without doing any research, they'll throw it into the market and they will lose and then they blame the software. And that's not how the real world works. Know what you're doing. So I have some risk management guidelines I'd like to walk you through. Um, if you fast forward through this, this is your own fault if you lose. I'm just giving you some warnings. Uh, nothing's guaranteed. It doesn't matter how accurate the log says it is, nothing is guaranteed. So for example, if you look and see 100% of butterflies won on Wednesday, it doesn't mean the next day they're all gonna be winners. It was just that day. This is still early version software. And even if I spend 20, 30 years on this, it'll never be 100%. Nothing's guaranteed. Um, entry times versus world events. Uh, people get this thought in their head that like 10.30 is the best time or 10.40 is the best time. Well, guess what? The software can't predict if we're going to war or if COVID comes back or something. So you have to watch the real world news, especially like the government. I'm sorry, but FOMC days suck sometimes. The market will be going up. They'll get on camera, start talking and whew, goes down and dies. It's just how it works. So you have to understand the news and real world events. Um, don't trade too much. I've talked about this before. Don't take every trade. <sighs> what drives me nuts is when somebody comes in and they take like five, six trades and lose all five, six trades and then blame me. And I'm like, you're the genius that did this. Don't be that guy. I'm sorry. Just don't do that. Take one trade and manage that trade appropriately. And I shouldn't even say that. I would just say, take the trades you feel you can lose because eventually you're going to lose. Nothing's perfect. All right. Um, along those lines, understand drawdowns, especially like iron condors, for example. 
Um, iron condors at one point rated at 99%. So 99% of those condors were winners, but that 1% will put you in the negative because you will have like a month worth of winners and hit one loser and all of your profit for that month is gone. So understand stop loss and risk management. Know when to get out of your trade. Um, follow your risk management plan. That's really the biggest one. Respect your stop losses, right? I mean, I, I do this consistently. I'm guilty of it. I'm sorry, I am. I'll get in a trade and I'm like, well, magic says this and my gut says that. We're going to the moon and then I take a loss. And I'm like, mm, I did not follow my plan. As good as the software is, nothing's perfect. And the market does change and fluctuate. So follow your risk management plan. Respect your stop losses. And at the end of the day, take your ego out of trading. Don't sit there and have a gambler mentality of it's going to win. I just know it. I would rather eat a small loss now than take a huge loss later because I know if I take that small loss, I can still survive, go on and trade and make a big win. The market is all about survivability. You want to take as little loss as you can so you can hit those major wins later on. Trade responsibly. I want to, um, I want to wrap this video up with just setting the notes aside and having a real conversation with you about the future of magic. Um, I did not expect this to go as far as it did. This was a personal hobby of mine during COVID just because I was bored and I wanted to understand options trading. It's really kind of taken on a life of its own. Um, I absolutely love it. I love the community. I love working with you folks. I've learned so much and I'm so grateful. But everything has to come to an end at some point. The decision I've made is that 137 is going to be long-term support and it's going to stay exactly the way it is for the foreseeable future. However, I will be working on version two. And this is a touchy subject. Nobody likes change. There's a group of people that says 137 is perfect, don't touch it. But I see the potential for more. I have a lot of lessons learned. I've gained a lot of knowledge. You have to understand, I wrote the current versions of Magic when I knew like virtually nothing about options trading or the stock market. I had some buy and hold stocks, but I'd never done options trading before. Now that I'm a few years of experienced options trading, I want to rewrite it using what I call Magic version two. And nothing is guaranteed, nothing's written in stone. This is just me thinking out loud. Some things I wanna do with version two. I wanna make it more streamlined. I wanna make it vastly more easier for just a mere mortal, just a common person um, to come in and start trading. I call it the Uncle John test. My uncle's name is John and he is not computer savvy and he is not stock market savvy at all. I want to make this Uncle John proof. So Uncle John can come in, click a button, make money. That's where I wanna take this. That being said, there's some shortcomings in the current version of Magic. Like there's no stop loss. There's no profit collection. There's no risk to reward ratio. You just, you have to trust that the accuracy rating is the accuracy rating. I don't like that. So in version two, I'm gonna bake in stop loss and profit collection. And I'm going to find the, the sweet spot, if you will. And this is an example. This isn't reality. This is me hypothetically saying, let's say like an NDX 1015 butterfly with a 10% stop and a 35% profit yields you know, 100,000 a year. That's what I'm looking for. So I wanna take the current build of magic, take what works and just pump it full of steroids and make it work even better and take all the crap that doesn't work and throw it out. And I wanna add extra community features. Like I love a log server, like an actual web server that you can go to and download logs, sort, filter, whatever you wanna do. So people stop asking me for logs every five minutes. Um, and we're not all living in you know spreadsheet hell, um, but to have like an actual log server. And yes, I am, because of community feedback, looking at um, automated trading, like um, I think Options Alpha is one of them that I'm looking at, where you can, and I don't know how this works, I haven't really, sorry Bill, I know you're watching, I, I haven't really looked into this in detail, but you can hook in your account with like Options Alpha and then hit it a trigger. So like the 1030 vertical would just automatically trigger to your account and you wouldn't have to even touch magic or even look at the screen, it would just do it for you. I'm looking at that. And I am, this part's very controversial. I'm looking at doing an API. If you're not a computer person, you're like, a, a what? Application programming interface. It is a way that applications talk to each other. So I would build an API for magic and then developers could take their program and interface with magic and then build whatever they wanna build. 
Uh, the problem with that is it's going to be costly. It's going to be expensive. It's going to have to be bulletproof. There's probably going to have to be a certain level of uptime and service level agreements that are going to have to exist, right? Because other people are going to go off and build businesses out of this thing, and I want that to be rock solid. So that's way, way, way off in the future. Um, that being said, that would be more designed towards big banks, industries, uh, hedge funds, things like that. Um, you, I hate to call retail traders, but you know, the folks that are just sitting at home trading, this is probably not a feature you'd want. You may think you want it, but it, probably not. You'd probably want more of the you know, automated trading where you say, I want the 1030 vertical or this or that. Um, I may scale the API down and make it you know, accessible to everybody, but right now that would kind of be like the big one that big businesses would use. Uh, simply because if you're putting those numbers out there, someone else is trusting those numbers and building an application around it and selling it to someone else. That comes with a lot of risk. I guess the underlying theme here with version two is um, I've actually grown to love options trading in the community and I want to take what works and make it better. And I can't do that in the current version of Magic. Uh, Magic 137 is still version one software. And like most version one software, sorry developers, this is true, but like most version one software, it is a hot mess under the hood. It, I could have done so much better. I just didn't know what I was doing market-wise when I wrote it. But now that I have an understanding of what works and what doesn't, I can make it much better. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. Um, I would love your feedback either here or especially in the Discord server, um, particularly not just on you know 137, but also version two. What would you like to see? Where would you like this to go? 137 is going to live for a long, long time, fingers crossed, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to work on version 2, and I want to nail it right. I want to get it right the first time. That kind of misleading because it's version 2, but I want to get version 2 right the first time. Um, that way, when it's out into production, everyone is just like, holy crap. So, eventually we'll get there. That's all for this video. I love you guys.